You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where we talk about building computer vision models using AutoML for images. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show where we're talking about building computer vision models using AutoML for images. I'm here with Swati. How are you doing, my friend? Doing good. How are you doing, Seth? Fantastic. Why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? I'm Swati Harse. I'm a product manager uh, on the Azure Machine Learning team. And I am very excited to talk to you all about a brand new capability we launched just this past week. Uh, this is AutoML for Images, where you can use AutoML to build computer vision models. Fantastic. So let's start with the kinds of problems that computer vision can actually solve so that we can ground the discussion in the mm -hmm. actual problem set. Yeah, so there's a, there's a whole bunch of problems actually um, out in the industry. So customers across various industries, they're looking to build models that can process image data. And applications can range from uh, image classification of fashion photos, say on the internet, or uh, PPE detection in, in industrial environments. And this includes a variety of tasks, including um, image classification, object detection, instance segmentation, and AutoML has newly added support for all of these computer vision related tasks. Uh, so out here, I have a quick slide showing you know, what these tasks mean. Uh, image classification is simply identifying different classes. Like here you can see, are there cats, are there dogs? And we support both multi-class and multi-label. Uh, with object detection, you might want to find out where exactly are these cats and dogs and draw rectangular bounding boxes around them. And with instance segmentation, you want to do this uh, detection at the pixel level and draw polygons around these. And AutoML has added support for all of these tasks where uh, it, it can boost data scientists' productivity as they are building models for these kind of computer vision tasks. This is awesome. So for those that don't know, this is actually a challenging problem. Can you tell us why it's, it's challenging? Absolutely. So uh, in the ideal world, when, when you're building models for computer vision tasks, you would want to have an easy way to build these models. Uh, but at the same time, you also want to have control on uh, how that model is trained so that you can optimize model performance, right? And you want to use these models out in the real world, so you need to operationalize them. And you want to have control on the end-to-end -end model lifecycle once that model is generated. Uh, but in reality, what happens is data scientists are traditionally relying now on, uh, on, on really manual methods for uh, manually building these models, right? It's, it's a tedious task trying to try these different algorithms. You come in with your own training scripts. You got to um, you got to identify the right hyperparameters that are going to make your model work, and all of this typically is painstakingly manual and requires a lot of data scientist effort and time, right? Something that's at a premium. So that's where uh, that's where AutoML can help, because using AutoML you can uh, easily build models for all of these computer vision related tasks without having to write any training code, right? AutoML makes it really easy for you as a user to optimize your model training so that you have a model that performs really well. Like you can control the model algorithms and the hyperparameters. Uh, and once that, once that model is generated, you can easily uh, deploy this model as a web service in Azure Machine Learning or you can download it and use it in your local inferencing scenarios. And all of this comes to you as a part of the Azure Machine Learning service. So you can, ve you can very easily and seamlessly integrate with other Azure ML capabilities. And I'm talking about things like uh, the data labeling capability in Azure ML, right? So you, you can uh, now have multiple labelers coming and labeling your training data. Uh, you can export the training data and use that with AutoML, or you can bring in your own labeled data set if you already have labeled training data. The other big thing we hear is about operationalizing these models. Because AutoML is, is a part of Azure Machine Learning, once you've generated this model, you can very easily operationalize it at scale using the MLOps capabilities within Azure Machine Learning. So think of things like um, you know, automated retraining or batch scoring. All of this is within your control. This is this is awesome, but generally, when we talk about AutoML, it feels a little black boxy. And you talked about data scientists. How does AutoML for images go about solving these these challenges in a way that empowers data scientists, but also allows them to look inside? 
That is a great question because I think you've summarized this really well. This is about letting the data scientists control all of um, you know all of the different uh, things that go into model making and empowering them to be more productive. So as a data scientist, you can come in and while you're training these models for the different um, task types, you can select from a variety of state-of-the-art algorithms that we support, right? And, and here I've named some of the algorithms that you can use. Uh, and you can either come in and say, choose this one single um, algorithm and try that out, or you can choose multiple options and explore, uh, you know, explore these multiple algorithms in a single AutoML run. Right. The other big thing that's really important, you know, when data scientists are building models is finding the right hyperparameters because your model performance is going to depend heavily on the values that you choose, right? And of course, you've got to, you've got to have your uh, machine learning knowledge and your data science skills because you've got to know, you've got to know what hyperparameters you're tuning. But AutoML exposes a variety of hyperparameters for each of these tasks. Many of these hyperparameters are model agnostic. Some of them are task specific and some of them are model specific. And by exposing these hyperparameters, you as a user can easily try these different values and tune your model for best performance in a single run. So think of things like um, learning rate or batch size and mm. all of this you can try very easily, explore it all in a single AutoML run while you're still leveraging your, your machine learning skill, but you're being way more productive because all of this is happening so easily in a single run. Interesting. So this is more like this is more like a stick shift car as opposed to an automatic car because you actually need to know, like for example, if you don't know what a YOLO V5 is or a faster RCNN or, or Retina Net, this is probably not going to be for you. But if you're a data scientist that wants to go through the entire process of figuring out what's the best solution, this is a good shotgun to get a sense for where things are, right? Yeah, absolutely right. You you can once you know what to try, this allows you to try these different values very easily. And I like that analogy. I'm going to use that the next time. Yes, I did a good it's, thing. It's the stick shift car of model building. I like mm. that. Mm. Okay, cool. So now I feel like I want to see how it actually works. Can you give us a demo of what of uh, of the capabilities? Absolutely. Let me bring that on here. You have my screen? I got it. All right. So here is a sample notebook I'm going to show you guys really quick uh, where a user is coming in and let's see what the user is doing. I'm going to build an object detection model here for a simple task of detecting objects from my fridge, right? I have a toy data set with things like cans of Coke or water bottles, and I'm going to use AutoML to help me build an object detection model for this. And to get started, I'm using all of the goodness of Azure Machine Learning. I create my workspace. I bring in my compute target, um, set up an experiment. Out here, I need to bring in my training data. And like I mentioned earlier, I can either bring in my previously labeled training data or I can use uh, I, I can leverage Azure Machine Learning's data labeling capabilities and export that labeled data to use for training. But let's get to the good stuff real quick. So all, all of this uh, notebook shows you how to how to bring in your training data and create that as a, an Azure Machine Learning data set. But here is the part I want to show you where you can get started with the AutoML goodness. So let's say I'm getting started, and I know I want to try YOLO v5, but to start, I'm not quite sure which hyperparameters to use, right? So I set up my AutoML config like this. I say my task is, image, uh, is object detection. I give it my compute target, my training data. I can optionally give it validation data, or it'll, it'll reserve a part of my training data set for validation. And here I come in and say, try YOLO v5. In this example, I'm giving it just one algorithm, but I could totally have used more. And by doing this simple step, it's going to try the default YOLO v5 algorithm with default hyperparameters for me, right? But now I want to take this one step further. Like, I, I really want to get the best model performance out of this. The default was good, but I want to see how much, how much more performance and accuracy I can squeeze out of that model. So I can now come in and easily tune the different hyperparameters or try different algorithms all in a single run. And here's how I do that. So in this case, I'm trying a combination of YOLO v5 and faster RCNN. And for each of these, I'm calling out which hyperparameters I want to tune. I'm actually giving it ranges of learning rate, uh, giving it different choices of model size. Similarly, with faster RCNN, I'm using different learning rates and optimizers. And I, I can build this model space however I please and try multiple algorithms for each one. I can try multiple uh, hyperparameters. 
and then here i control how i'm actually be going to uh, how i'm actually going to be trying all these different uh, algorithm and hyperparameter combinations so i give it my budget i i leverage concurrency of my uh, compute target i had a multi node compute target here and i can i can select things like what kind of sampling do i want you know do i want random or i can pick bayesian or grid as well uh, this is another cool feature where i can leverage early termination meaning any of my configurations that aren't performing as well will be automatically terminated to save me compute resources and once i've set up my config i go in and i say again hey give me an object detection model here's my compute target my training data boom submit this run that's cool. Can you scroll up? I want to have I have a question here because I want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. Uh -huh. so basically, this parameter space is you saying, if I were to do this on my own as a data scientist, I would go through all of these choices, you know, by, one by one. But I'm just going to put them in a parameter space and tell AutoML for images, just go do all of that for me. Absolutely right. And and you're right. When you were doing this manually, you would be trying one at a time. You know, going through that manual iterative process. Did this work? Did this not work? What should I try next? Here, you're not only saying try all of these, but uh, if, if you take a look at the learning rate here, right? I'm simply saying here's a uniformly distributed space. Try values from 0.0001 to 0.01 and pick randomly from that space, right? I'm not even calling out individual learning rates. Like I can basically give it a, um, a continuous or discrete space and tell it how, how you want it to sample from that space. And it does that all for you in one run. That's really cool. Okay, so what does this look like when it actually runs? Good question. So out here, I have a completed run with a similar parameter space that I gave for object detection. This is my completed AutoML run. I can go in here and, okay, it's loading, it's loading. As it's loading, so basically it's running all of these experiments for you on the cloud compute, is that right? That is correct. It's running, it, it's it's doing your job for you while you go get a coffee. Yes, so you can- But you, you can, still need your, your skills. That's right, so basically it's like, like cause the cool thing about this is if you're having an image, pro, if you have an image, not an image problem, but you know, like an image classification or object detection, you can basically just say over the weekend, all right, let's try all the things that I know kind of work and then leave it running over the weekend, and then you will see something like this at the end. One of my users actually said exactly that. They said, this this functionality is so cool, I'm getting my weekends back. Nice. <laughs> so right, anyway, we so, so once I have my models, right, this is my leaderboard of all the top models, and you have complete visibility into what was tried, what hyperparameter values were tried. I can select any one of them and then go either uh, deploy the model out to Azure Machine Learning as a web service, or I can download the model and use it locally. And then I want to show you real quick a couple other things. Here are my child runs. I can go. Um, oh, sorry. I can go and uh, explore each of these mm -hmm. and and see how all of those performed. So out here, you can see these runs that weren't performing as well. They got early terminated, which is super cool for me as a user because it's saving me compute resources, right? These weren't promising runs. What's the point in uh, in spending compute resources on that? While these runs up on top are the ones that were doing well, and the system automatically decided they should continue all the way through the end because those are going to give me the most promising model performance. And I can I can then get into any individual run here. Let's take this guy for example, and get into the outputs. And out here, I can I can access the model PyTorch file or the Onyx file, and I'm free to use it however I like in my. And, and in that, my that's the next question I was going to ask because sometimes when we're looking at auto things, it feels like we get locked in. You know, we get, if you're going to use our auto thing, you're going to have to use our auto. You know, mm -hmm. basically when you're running this, the the outcome is whatever you would have done before as a data scientist, except it was done automatically for you. Can you do whatever you want with the models? Absolutely. At this point, you can take your model uh, and you know go go and uh, deploy it as a web service out in Azure Machine Learning. Use that in your inferencing scenario, or let's say you have a local inferencing scenario. You can download these model files right here and use them in local inferencing. 
And then you can also use these with other uh, MLOps capabilities within Azure Machine Learning, right? You can you can now use this for automated retraining, batch scoring, whatever else you would do with a custom trained model in Azure Machine Learning. You can go ahead and do that. You have full control of your model. It feels like a really awesome productivity tool for someone that wants to solve a computer vision problem. Now I'm going to ask a question that might seem to me there's a little bit of a confusion. We have something called custom vision. We have computer vision custom vision, and now AutoML for images. Can you maybe describe what the difference might be and when you might choose one over the other? Great question. So custom vision is a great tool that helps you build uh, computer vision models without needing any data science or ML expertise, right? Uh, the, the These models are built, they're pre-trained with data sets that are optimized for specific tasks. Sometimes, though, your scenario might require you to have more control on either model training or model deployment or, you know, just the end-to-end -end ML lifecycle of that model. And when you need this additional control, AutoML offers you all of this control and flexibility while still making it easy for you to use. So think of AutoML as being targeted to data scientists with ML expertise in the computer vision area, uh, but it's it's boosting your um, your productivity as a data scientist as you're building these models. I see. So AutoML for images is like stick shift. Computer a uh, 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 custom vision is like you driving your own automatic car, and computer vision is like getting chauffeured around, uh, so to speak, because everything is a lot e like you basically are doing less and less of the data science work at that point. I, I like your analogies. I guess you could say that. <laughs> mm, fantastic. So where can folks go to find out more? Uh, so I'm going to share I'm going to share a um, link to a release announcement that has all the information on the wonderful capabilities here, and also more importantly, links to documentation and uh, sample notebooks. I would love for folks to try this out and get feedback on the product. Fantastic. Well, Swati, since thank you so much for being with us. We've been learning all about building computer vision models using AutoML for images on the AI show. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully, we'll see you next time. Take care.